Hi, my name is Pınar Serdan Geçti. I'm an economist by background and I work in the telecom sector dealing with sector regulation and competition issues for 20 years. I work for ECTA, the European Competitive Telecommunications Association. We represent those alternative operators who relying on the pro-competitive EU legal framework that has created a free market for electronic communications challenge the incumbents. Our members have driven innovation and made massive investments in network and technology to give EU citizens, businesses and public administrations quality and choice at affordable prices. We place Europe's global competitiveness at the forefront of our concerns. Therefore, we recognize the critical role of different players in the sector, big and small, as the key factor that fosters innovation and empowers the entire European economy. By creating and offering diverse products and services, we unlock Europe's innovative potential and ensure a strong and competitive marketplace. So, how can we accelerate positive outcomes in terms of connectivity in the next decade? Well, let's start by identifying well the issues our sector encounter with the positive and the opportunities, rather than adopting the catastrophist discourse, such as the one promoted by the Letta and Draghi reports. A solid identification of the data characterizing the sector and its performance and the per problems that are actually real is necessary in order to find adequate recipes aimed at further increasing the telecom sector's performance. By contrast, relying on erroneous recipes could create substantial and irreversible damage to EU citizens' and businesses' welfare and to the EU's global competitiveness. We believe, on the basis of the factual data, that for the past three decades, EU electronic communications regulation has delivered a unique European success story. Promotion of competitive telecoms markets, combined with effective ex-ante regulatory measures, is driving investments, positive innovation and consumer benefits in telecom. Europe excels with respect to its global peers when it comes to combining the deployment of gigabit networks, their use by consumers and professional users, as well as their affordability and inclusion. The European FTTH deployment rate is higher than that of the United States. Also, in terms of affordability and inclusion of broadband offers, the EU scores very high. The EU27 has the lowest prices for all bundled offers among all speed categories compared to Japan, South Korea and the USA. When it comes to the financial health of the European telecoms operators, our members' performance speaks for itself. And we have the very recent studies analyzing the incumbent's performance in 10 different member states in terms of free cash flow generation, showing that health of the telecom sector is not catastrophic as the others are presenting it. So overall, we see an authentic success story and not a failure or something structural in need of fixing. However, this does not mean that there is nothing to be improved. We see three improvement areas. Appropriate policy action in those areas can help to further boost the good performance of the European telecom sector. The first one is the lack of adoption of the FTTH networks by consumers and businesses. It means that users don't benefit from the best technologies and solutions actually available. It means that operators' return on investment in these technologies is lower than optimal. And it is bad for the environment if energy-intensive older copper and mobile networks are not phased out in favor of fiber and latest generation mobile networks. This also creates obstacles to the emergence of the new and innovative services that run on top of the new networks. Therefore, policies aimed at the adoption of the FTTH networks by consumers and businesses is key to eliminate the cost of keeping obsolete infrastructures in live service and ultimately increase the network's profitability. The second one is the radio spectrum. The misuse of the spectrum auctions by some member states as a cash cow has been a real issue, negatively affecting the deployment of mobile networks for decades. The adoption of harmonized auction processes across Europe to strike the right balance between need of higher mobile coverage for the citizens with a timely and efficient rollout of the capillary networks and the income expected by the states would improve the investment capacity of operators' wireless networks. The third issue concerns the highly heterogeneous, untransparent, mostly local permit procedures for network deployment often requiring multiple different permits for the same project and having uncertain and uncoordinated timelines and outcomes. 
we hope that the recently enacted Gigabit Infrastructure Act could somehow be helpful to improve the current state of art, even though it has been weakened significantly with respect to the original proposal of the Commission. It suffers from inconsistencies. What to avoid? Don't buy the narrative on the alleged excessive competition disease suffered by European telecoms and avoid drastic and merely political moves aimed at reducing competition in the European telecom sector. Any political attempt to impose from the top a reduction of competition, for instance, by lifting the ex-ante sector regulation, where this is not justified on a serious technical assessment from the national regulatory authorities, would irreversibly harm the incentives to invest and innovate, and would destroy European consumer welfare in telecoms. The fact that we have different market players, whether large or small, is paramount to encourage the innovation and investment that are required to digitalize the EU's economy and is essential to ensure that consumers, businesses and public administrations' needs are met. Competition, therefore, must remain a core value when considering reforms of EU legal framework and should be safeguarded and not destroyed for the sake of Europe's global competitiveness. Competitiveness on the global stage will only be achieved by means of continued progress toward achieving effective competition at all levels within the EU, with regulatory intervention to promote competition where needed, and not by sacrificing competition. <laughs>